appreciate you making some time for us tonight. Thank you for being here. You have viewers tuning in tonight, looking at the futures, saying, oh, no, here we go again. They're looking for some hand-holding, I think. When do you think the intense selling is going to stop? Could have ended Friday. You don't know. Let me just say this. We've got to be balanced now reporting. You guys have quoted Ed Hyman of Evercore's zero growth in Q2 and Q3. You didn't quote the fact that he raised his growth rate for 2021 to 3%. But that's not the subject of my comments. Let me just say this. Less than two weeks ago, July, uh, uh, February 18th, to be precise, I was on your program, and I said the market was knocking on the door of euphoria. The market was expensive by all historical measures, save relative to interest rates, but the conditions normally associated with the big decline were not present, those conditions being accelerating inflation, if anything, we're having less inflation, an oncoming recession that clearly is on people's minds now, a hostile Fed, we have the furthest thing from a hostile Fed, or some kind of unforecastable geopolitical event, and let's just put the, the coronavirus in that category. Well, since that appearance on the 18th, the S&P uh, was at that time 3370. It's now dropped about 12 percent in a record time. We've had plenty of 12 percent corrections, but none that I recall in three days. And we have gone from complacency to fear in a very short time frame. And to have a strong conviction, conviction and to answer your question about the stock market outlook and what people should do, I think each individual has to have an opinion on two items. One is the coronavirus, and second is the election outcome. Now, on the coronavirus, I'm no expert. I don't, I'm not a doctor. I have two Ph.D. degrees, but they're both honorary, and they're not in medicine. Okay, but I, but I have to believe as an individual, I think with common sense, that with the world focusing on the problem, it's going to be solved quicker than most people think. I'm guessing June, but that is a pure guess. I think we all have to put this into perspective. While the loss of any human life is tragic, the coronavirus has had a much more serious impact on business activity than on human life thus far. And let's hope and pray that it continues that way. Let me cite some statistics without being a statistician. In the 2018-2019 flu season, there were over 35 million cases of flu, over 400,000 hospitalizations, and 34,000 deaths. During the 2017-2018 season, there were 45 million cases of the flu, 800,000 hospitalizations, 61,000 deaths. And in the 2016-2017 season, there were 29 million cases, 500,000 hospitalizations, 38,000 deaths. But, Lee, in, in, none of those, in none of those instances that you just cited, did they shut down the world's second largest economy? Did they threaten supply chains? I understand. All there is an the economic that, impact. That's why this the, is different. It is different, okay? But I believe when the world starts to focus on the problem, they will get it under control more quickly than people are thinking. For example, I believe Tim Cook of Apple said they're starting up production in China already. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, what the hell? Um, uh, well, know, look, there, there are a the lot coffee, of other the companies. Coffee, the coffee chain, the coffee chain. Starbucks. What the hell? Uh, Starbucks, excuse me, I'm having a senior moment here at 77 years of age. Starbucks is starting up production again. Uh, and that's, those are good signs. So as it regards the coronavirus, I'm of the view, you ask me my opinion, you know, opinions like those, everybody's got one. It'll be contained sooner than one thinks. The economy will definitely be hurt. But I think we'll be avoid a recession, and some of this demand is, is deferred, not obliterated. On the recession issue, I would observe that consumer income is strong, confidence is reasonably high, interest rates are exceptionally low, and they're going to go lower, which makes it very uh, advantageous to refinance your mortgage and basically very positive what for if, housing. What if Low this, oil prices what, are a big benefit to the consumer. What, what if, though, Lee— this does get worse before it gets better, and I'll it get changes. I'll get. Give me a second. I'll and get it there. changes I'll get consumer there. behavior. What has been the and, pillar and of the economy? you have a recession, okay. And if you have a recession, basically a typical recession uh, is a year uh, of contracting GDP, about two percent, peak to trough, basically, uh, um, and uh, the market drops twenty five percent from the high. And so that 25 percent off the 3,400 high would take it down to 2,550. I wouldn't say that's impossible. Let me go on. And uh, I would say that I was just saying a moment ago that some of the positive factors, consumer income is strong, confidence is reasonably high, interest rates are exceptionally low. 
uh, okay, uh, and they're going to go lower. This is going to help housing, refinancing of mortgages, put money in the consumer's pockets. Low oil prices are a big benefit to the consumer. We have 80 central banks easing moves since last May, and more are likely. China has eased 34 times since the virus started, from rate cuffs to tariff cuffs to easing credit to increasing government spending. So in sum, as regards the virus, call me an uninformed optimist that is long on common sense, okay? So that, that, that's my view of the virus. If you believe it's going to be out of control and we're going to be in a recession, step aside because the market will go lower, okay? Uh, second, what do I know is the politicians have to start acting like adults, work together, and stop the finger pointing. And that goes to the press as well. Be responsible in your reporting. On the election issue, I firmly believe the country is not prepared to elect a communist or a socialist. And I'm referring to. I know. Sanders I know who you're. Refer I know who you're referring to. And and okay, and, and 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 I, I, honestly, I, I don't want to go there um, right now. Lee, no, do I don't want to go. I don't want. I said there are two things that are bothering the market. One is the coronavirus, and second is the political outlook. Sure. Okay. I, I certainly so, think that that the, the virus is what's gripped investors, and certainly is no question the, the about bulk it. Of the when, selling. They get, when they get when they get finished with the virus, they'll go to politics. And let, uh, let me do this. Why let me you... give you a constructive suggestion, if I may. While the Fed is likely to cut rates. That is not my recipe to deal with the problem. On December 24th of 2018, I wrote the chairman of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, Jay Clayton, explaining the negative fallout from the quant traders that are roiling in the markets, and we should reinstate the uptick rule to slow them down. They buy strength, they sell weakness, and they know everything about price and nothing about value. This volatility is scaring the public. It's ultimately going to raise the cost of capital to business. It can affect consumer spending, jobs, tax revenues, etc. 50 to 100 point swings up and down in 30 minute time frames make no economic sense. Why don't they reinstate the uptick rule? The president should stop leaning on the Fed. The Chairman Powell knows what to do. He's done a very fine job. Okay. Let the, the, the Secretary Mnuchin, uh, President, uh, uh, get in, on the phone and call Jay Clayton and ask him, what do we lose by reinstating the uptick rule? What do we lose? Who gets hurt by that? Lee, I'm going to.